Weight loss is a huge market globally, and Guyana is no exception to that. People are willing to go to great lengths and pay whatever price to make their weight loss journey as easy as they can. The diabetic drug Ozempic has been the go-to solution for our celebrities and many others in the United States. While the drug is FDA approved, it is not registered for use in Guyana, thus making its sale, distribution, and administration illegal. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about Ozempic and how that drug is at the center of a lucrative underground trade in Guyana. So the other day, I was scrolling Facebook, minding my business and the people business as you do on Facebook. And I came across a weight loss ad talking about Ozempic progress. But I didn't think much of it and I kept on scrolling. But not too long after, I came across another weight loss ad from a weight loss clinic also advertising the drug Ozempic. So... The first thing I thought was, wow, the Ozempic craze made it to Guyana. But at that time, I was fresh off of doing the video about the government analyst food and drug department. So the first question that sprung to mind was, is that drug authorized for administration in Guyana? So of course, I had to do some digging. Very quickly on into my digging, a few things became clear. So let me highlight those before I go any further in the video. The first is that the diabetic drug Ozempic is not registered for use in Guyana. So individuals and establishments selling or administering the product are doing so illegally. Since we're talking about illegal and unethical medical practices, you might want to hear this message from today's sponsor, Washington Law Firm. One medical mistake can permanently change your life or the life of someone you love. These mistakes are too common in America, causing injury and sometimes death. If you suspect that you were injured as a result of a medical mistake, call Washington Law Firm today. Don't lose your opportunity to get compensated. Don't wait. Book your free consultation with Washington Law Firm by calling 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. Consequently, if we use supply chain logic, the fact that there are sellers means that there are consumers buying the product and distributors supplying the drugs. So the next step for me was to find out information about how things are happening along that chain. Fortunately for me, there was a Starbrook News article published with just that information. Speaking to Starbrook News, an entrepreneur admits to currently selling and administering the drug for the purpose of weight loss. The entrepreneur went on to state that it is U.S. Federal Drug Administration, FDA approved, and she's currently out of stock. She was not aware that the drug had to be registered locally, notwithstanding FDA approval. The entrepreneur also shared that the medication is transported typically via cold storage and that they would purchase from a licensed pharmaceutical distributor. I think that's a detail we need to pay attention to. Moving further into the article, acknowledging that this is a diabetic drug, the source related to Stabrook News that they basically have a history that is a lab history of the health of the client and depending on those values, they decide what dosage to start them on. The majority of clients start at the lowest dose so that they remain accountable and check their reactions in order to make sure that they get the best treatment and aren't consumed by their side effects. The patients that are diabetic or pre-diabetic benefit more from the medication as it controls their blood sugar and they have the added benefit of weight loss. Other sources state that one of the ways to purchase Ozempic in Guyana is through making contact with a Trinidadia who brings it back with him frequently from Trinidad through the CJIA to Mary in his suitcase. Just recently, 24 pharmacies in Trinidad were under police probe for selling unregistered, fake, and expired drugs, which included unregistered and therefore illegally imported Ozempic. There are several local medical spas on social media advertising Ozempic for weight loss. Additionally, 
A well-known medical establishment has also shared with Stabrook News that they have discontinued their sale of Ozempic. Prices locally for Ozempic varied significantly. The medical spas ranged from 100,000 to 150,000 per dose, and the medical establishment ranged around 200,000 per dose. To put those prices in perspective, each person would require a minimum of four doses once weekly administered, depending on the assessment given by the medical professional. Ceasing ozempic usage may lead to weight regain and decline in cardiometabolic health. We just saw in the article that each person requires a minimum of four doses administered weekly. So we're talking about anywhere from $400,000 to $800,000 per month just to use this drug. Immediately, that underlines and emphasizes that this underground trade is being fueled by the upper class. And that makes sense because that may explain why this hasn't gotten the attention or publicity that you might think it would. So let's stay on the logical train and think about this. Can you think of any prominent or wealthy persons, maybe public figures that have had dramatic weight loss in recent months? This could be an explanation for that. Now, while in the article, we saw that the Food and Drug Department said that they will seize and put a stop to the use, the administration, the distribution of any drugs that are unregistered, counterfeit, etc. We know that the trade has been happening, continues to happen, and in the article itself, it says that a licensed distributor is supplying the drugs. So... What does that tell you about the operation or the effectiveness of the food and drug department? As seen in the video about Chinese supermarkets and stores selling antibiotics over the counter, we can see that whatever net they're using is full of holes. In all likelihood, we may see a fast tracking of the registration and authorization of the use of Ozempic locally. However, all that will show is that the rules are being bent to accommodate and assist, perhaps, the upper class of Guyana. Guyanese know the saying, who got money, got bargain. But the issue in situations like this is that when it comes to matters of drugs, especially those that are available or being used on members of the public, safety is a great concern. And it's a disservice to the average and the majority of Guyanese when you see rules are being bent, accommodations are being made for those with money, and there's no care, concern, or protection given to the average everyday Guyanese citizen. Where are the statements from government officials and authorities, particularly in the medical sector, warning about unlawful distribution and administration of drugs like these. As with issues that I've addressed previously on this channel, it's not simply about pointing out what's happening now, but giving a warning or identifying the holes in the system because things can potentially be worse in the future if these remain unresolved. For example, in matters of improper sale and administration of drugs or medical malpractice, what happens when somebody suffers really bad side effects? They're hospitalized, debilitated, or worse. Will we continue to deflect and make excuses for the underground economy as some commenters did on previous videos? Or will we actually take the problem seriously because lives have been irreparably harmed or even lost? I don't think we should let it get to that point. However, what you do with the information provided to you is entirely up to you. Why are things different in this case? And that's where I want you guys to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Why is the illegal distribution, sale and administration of Ozempic going under the radar? Do you think this 
unregistered drug should be given the same treatment as any other unregistered drug that comes into Guyana? What about the clear double standard when it comes to an underground market being fueled by the upper class? Could that be the reason the authorities are slow to act? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.